Mother-in-law shamed me on Facebook for being infertile, so I posted proof my husband is actually the one who can't have kids, he'd been lying to me for years. Hey, everyone. I, 29F, got married to my husband, 30M, 4 years ago and we started trying for a baby about half a year back. It was my idea to have a baby because I felt like I was ready to be a mom and also because I just really wanted to be a mother ever since I got married. I love kids and I've always wanted to have a big, happy family of my own so 3 years into the marriage just felt like the right time. My husband wanted to wait it out for a couple more years but I convinced him that the timing was just right and waiting until later would lead to health complications for me eventually. So right now was an ideal time since we were both at a good place financially too and he finally agreed after a couple of days. But almost 6 months passed with still no baby and with a heavy heart, I accepted that neither of us had fertility issues. I had a gut feeling that it was my husband and not me for no specific reason but of course, both of us had to get tested. He was reluctant to get tested and I had to push him really hard to go get tested and I got myself tested, too. A few days after that, we received the results and just as I'd expected, it was my husband who was infertile. I was really disappointed to learn that we couldn't conceive the natural way and would have to look for alternatives which would cost us a lot more than we'd planned. So we decided to drop the idea for now because we were quite disheartened with the results as well. This happened about a month ago. I thought that I'd console him but he seemed more annoyed than upset, which I thought was kind of weird. Of course, now I know the reason why he was annoyed and not sad at the news. It wasn't news for him at all but I'll get into that a little later. Before getting into that side of the story, I want to talk about my mother-in-law. So like I said, my husband and I had decided to drop the idea of having a baby for the time being because both of us were emotionally drained. However, my mother-in-law was aware that we'd been trying to conceive for a while because my husband had told her that she should be expecting a grandchild one or two months after we decided to start trying. She was very excited and I was glad to share that excitement with her because my husband seemed more nervous than excited but I didn't think it was unusual because fatherhood was a huge deal and it was natural to be nervous. I thought he'd be more excited when the baby comes so I didn't make an issue out of it. My mother-in-law was very excited and kept asking us if we had any news for her whenever she visited but was disappointed every time. When I learned that my husband was infertile, I didn't have the heart to tell her about it and I didn't think this was something that I should be sharing. So after we received the report, my mother-in-law visited again and once again, she asked if I'd conceived yet and even suggested some doctors we could go to if we were struggling. I was about to tell her that we'd decided to drop that idea but my husband said that we were doing just fine and she'd be the first to know whenever I was pregnant. I was a little surprised that he was keeping this from his mom but then after she left, he explained that he was just not in the right headspace to explain this to his mom right now. I wasn't very satisfied with that answer but I didn't question it because it really wasn't any of my business what he told his mom. He and his mother are very close because they were all they had while he was growing up since his father passed away at a very young age. It was just him and his mother against the world and he told me that he'd already disappointed me, he wasn't mentally prepared to disappoint her as well. That was really sad and so I didn't push him to tell his mom the truth. It did start bothering me though when she started texting me tips every day and would call me every third day to ask if I was pregnant yet and kept insisting that she take me to a medical professional. I was already upset that I wouldn't be a mother by the end of the year like I'd planned and the last thing I needed was a reminder about it every other day when I was trying to move on from the disappointment. So about a week and a half ago, I finally told my husband that he needed to tell his mother the truth and make sure she stopped calling me every other day because it's getting really hard for me to keep this secret from her. He agreed to tell her and the calls finally stopped. She stopped visiting, calling, or texting and it was just radio silence from her end which I thought was kind of strange. But I was going through a lot myself so I didn't bother to reach out to her and told myself that she'd contact me whenever she was ready. I forgot about that for a while and tried to focus on my work to take my mind off of things but unfortunately, I got a horrible reminder of everything that was happening in the form of a scathing Facebook post by my mother-in-law. About 5 days back, she posted how she regretted ever letting her son marry me. I'll just attach the text of the post here because I really don't have the energy to paraphrase it. So, here's what she posted, 4 years ago, my son told me that he was going to Eliza, my name, and I'd been thrilled that my son was finally going to marry and have a family of his own. I wished for his child to have a better childhood than he did and I thought Eliza would be the one to help him have that. How wrong was I? This horrible woman tricked my son into marrying her and now, she has the audacity to tell him that she won't be able to give us a child at all because she's infertile. She'd been leading us on for 4 entire bloody years. I can't believe that I ever let my son marry this disgusting woman who cares for nothing except for herself, her own feelings, and her own career. That's all. Marrying her was the worst decision of your life, Rick, my husband. I request all mothers to please, please make sure the women who marry your sons are not the same as my cheating, scheming, and infertile daughter-in-law. I will never, ever forgive this brat for toying with my son's feelings as well as mine and she will be punished for the pain and heartache she has caused us both. Please keep me and my son in your prayers and hope that we're able to make it through this tough phase of our lives. We don't deserve this. So she posted that 5 days back and obviously I was shocked and got back home as soon as I could. 
My mother-in-law and I weren't the best of friends but we'd always been civil to each other so this was a huge shock to me. I had to leave work midway because I was getting calls from several relatives and friends since she'd tagged my husband and me in the post so it had shown up on my profile as well. I'd untagged myself but the damage was already done and people just kept texting me to ask what was going on. Ignoring all of that, I got home as quickly as I could to talk to my husband about it. He hadn't answered my calls or responded to my texts and only got home an hour after I did. He hadn't removed his tag from the post either so it was still showing on his profile and all our common friends could see it which wasn't good for us at all. By then, I'd figured out that my husband had lied to his mother about who exactly was infertile and she'd bought it. I was livid and confused as hell but I decided to stay back and confront him before I did anything else. When he finally got back home, he tried to calm me down and make this all seem like a misunderstanding but I know it wasn't. After I yelled at him for a bit, he finally confessed that he'd lied to his mom because he hadn't had the heart to tell her the truth. They'd even gotten into a huge fight over it because she'd told him to leave me but he'd refused and they hadn't spoken for a while after their fight. She'd made that post out of spite and anger and he wanted me to ignore it. Obviously, I flared up at that because how was I supposed to just ignore something of this sort where she was publicly shaming me for something that wasn't even true? So I told him that either he could come clean about it on his own and make his mother issue a public apology to me or I'd take matters into my own hands and deal with this the way I deemed fit. He told me that I wasn't allowed to do anything of the sort and the moment he said that, I realized that I was done with him. First, he'd lied to his mom about me and now, he thought that he could push me around and throw me under the bus for something that wasn't even my fault. So I told him to go to hell, packed a bag, and drove to the nearest hotel where I finally responded to the important calls and texts, the ones from my family. My parents live in a different state and we don't talk very often because we're both really busy. They run a small business of their own and I have work so we only get to talk sometimes but whenever we do, the calls always last more than an hour or so. I had kept them updated throughout my pregnancy and they'd been very supportive when they learned that my husband was infertile and never said anything bad about him or accused him of anything like my mother-in-law had done to me. And that's why I am who I am and my husband turned out the way he did, clearly the way we were raised was very different because the people were very, very different. Anyway, I talked to them and told them about the fight I had with my husband and how I'd left him at home to come stay in a hotel. They told me that they were proud of me for standing up for what I believed in and even offered to come over to help me out however they could but I told them to stay, their faith in me was all the reassurance I needed. I thought that leaving was supposed to be the hardest part and since I was done with that, I wouldn't have more to deal with but I was wrong. The post by my mother-in-law was deleted a few hours after I left but it was too little and too late. A lot of people had seen that post but I didn't care about anyone apart from my immediate family and friends and I'd already told them that none of it was true and explained the situation to them, so I didn't feel the need to talk to anyone else about this. I'd already been very upset ever since I received the results of the fertility test and my relationship with my husband had been strained because like I said, he was just annoyed all the time and refused to lighten up even when I made an effort to cheer him up. That post and his reaction to it was the last nail in the coffin and I finally left with no plans for the future. Obviously, somewhere deep down, I knew that I'd have to file for divorce but I also wanted him to come back to me and apologize for what he did but that apology never came. What came instead was a text from a woman who claimed to be his ex-girlfriend. Three days back, she reached out to me and while I was skeptical about her identity and thought that this was someone pranking me, she did prove it by sending a couple of pictures of her with my husband from a long time back. She told me that she was his girlfriend right before me and she'd been with him for about three years. I met my husband when I was 23 on a blind date and after two years of dating, we got married. He'd told me that he'd never been serious with any of his exes but this woman claimed that she'd been with him for almost five years and they even had plans to get married. They'd met in college and apparently had been together up until the year that I met him. According to the timeline of her story, they'd broken up just a few months before he started going out with me but he'd never told me about any of this. I was shocked to learn about all this as it is and it just got worse when she told me that the reason they'd broken up was because she wanted a family and they'd even been trying for a baby. They weren't married yet because her parents weren't ready for her to get married yet but she felt ready to build a life and family with him so they didn't mind not being married. But naturally, she couldn't get pregnant and they had to get tested as well and obviously, she found out that he was infertile. She tried to come to terms with it and be okay with it but he lashed out at her and after a lot of fighting and toxicity, they finally broke up. Then he met me and she wanted to warn me but stayed out of it because she thought it was none of her business. She did find out about my mother-in-law's post from another college friend of hers and that's when she felt like she should let me know about his history. I had no idea what to do when I was numb when I found out and I remember sobbing like a baby because everything that I'd ever known about my husband had turned out to be a big fat lie. I remained upset for one whole day even though I knew that this would help me in the divorce, I just didn't have the heart to do anything at all, much less talk to a lawyer. I was upset for one whole day and just kept replaying all my conversations with my husband while we were trying and he could have come clean to me about all of this but he chose not to. I just kept feeling worse about it and finally, last evening, I decided to post the results of my husband's fertility test on Facebook and tag him and his mother just like my mother-in-law had done when she was angry. Both the results had been mailed to both of us since that's what we had wanted but it sure backfired in his case because he had nothing on me. 
It was a petty and spiteful move just to humiliate him, I'll admit that. I posted that and turned my phone off so that nobody could get to me. My husband hadn't even tried to talk to me after I'd left but I knew that this post would get him riled up and he'd be forced to contact me. He did call me this morning and yelled at me for about half an hour while I patiently heard him out and then disconnected the call without a response. He then texted me saying that what I'd done had ruined his life and was totally unnecessary because his mother had just let the stay up for a couple of hours whereas I let that post stay up for the entire night and this morning and it just wasn't fair to him because he'd convinced his mother to take her post down. He didn't know that I'd found out about his ex and the fact that he'd always known about his infertility and so I texted him saying that he'd let his mother's post stay up long enough for his ex to find it and reach out to me to tell me the truth about him. I didn't think he would have an answer for that but he did. He replied saying that regardless of everything, it was still very messed up for me to post something that was so personal. And I mean, he's not entirely wrong and I knew that what I did was petty and messed up. That was the intention so I don't know why I feel so guilty about posting his report online. Maybe I acted out of emotions or maybe he deserved it, I don't really know which is why I'm here because I can't trust my own judgment right now while I'm grappling with so many personal troubles. So Ida for posting my husband's fertility report online after my mother-in-law falsely accused me of being infertile in a Facebook post and also said that my husband had made the wrong decision by marrying me? Update 1, hi, so I finally filed for divorce today. About time I did as well since it's been two weeks since I left home. I took the post down after reading all the comments here. He did deserve every bit of it but I don't want to stoop down to their level just to get a reaction out of them. I'm not my mother-in-law and I don't want to do what they do just for petty revenge. I spoke to a lawyer that one of my friends put me in touch with a couple of days back and with all that my husband has done, settlement should be easy for us. We haven't spoken since that last text that he sent after I posted his results online and I'm okay with that. I finally got around to thanking his ex for telling me the truth as well because I'd pretty much been ignoring anyone who was not from my workplace because I was emotionally just so drained. But I'm getting better and I'm trying to make things work for myself now. I guess this marriage wasn't meant to be and that's why it's unraveling now. It kind of worked out well that we weren't able to have a kid because boy I'd hate to think of the mess that I'd be in if I was getting divorced while pregnant with his child. Because I still would be leaving him for lying to me about never having had a proper girlfriend. I think 5 years with someone qualifies as serious, especially if you're thinking of having a kid with that person but it's fine now. I'm just over it. Update 2, so, super quick update. I moved out of the hotel and in with a friend of mine and we'll be splitting the rent. It's a nice spacious house and I'm pleased with this arrangement since it's in a better neighborhood than I used to live in. He gets to keep the house because he paid more for it than I did and I guess eventually, I'll get the money back. Now the bad news is that I obviously have to go back home to get some of my stuff because I can't keep repeating the same 5 outfits I packed while I was leaving. And besides there are several things that I didn't bring with me so I'll have to go back to collect my things either way and I'll have to see him. I've spoken to him already and it was very short and curt. I wanted to rip the band-aid off as quickly as possible so I texted him the time I'd be coming over and he told me that he was cool with it. So I'm going over tomorrow after work to pack my things and properly move in with my friend. It's going to be weird seeing him after so long given the circumstances but at least I'll get some sense of closure, I think. I feel so weird thinking about the divorce proceedings because it's just crazy that I spent the last 4 years of my life with this man only to find out that everything I'd believed about him was a lie. Ugh, I just hope everything goes well tomorrow and it's not painfully awkward or whatever. Update 3, hey, everyone. So I'm in my new home right now and it's pretty late here so please excuse any mistakes that I make while sharing what happened today. So, like I said, I finally met him in person today and it was really weird and tense. He and I didn't speak much because we didn't want to make my friend uncomfortable by bringing up whatever had happened so we just packed quietly while he watched the game that was on in the living room. My friend and I didn't talk either because we just wanted to get things done and leave. Right before I was about to leave though, my husband stopped me and told me that he wanted to talk to me in person. So my friend left and waited in the car while my husband sat me down and apologized for everything. He sounded upset, but there was no going back from this. I didn't say that I forgave him, because I really couldn't. Not right now, at least. Maybe sometime in the future when I'm a lot older and have lived enough to let go of the past but right now, it's too fresh and too recent for me to just forgive. So I didn't say something that I didn't mean but I did ask him why exactly he'd been lying to me. Because one way or another, he knew I'd find out. It wasn't like I wouldn't have married him if I knew that he was infertile and even if I didn't, he still should have been honest and upfront with me. It was all the lies and the false hopes that just made me feel like he'd been screwing with me all along and I finally had the opportunity to get an answer for why he'd done what he did. And you know what he said? He told me that he thought that the results might have been different this time. I wish I was joking but that was his reason and he looked totally serious while saying it to me. I thought I'd crack up at that because it was just incredulous but I held back. It was denial on a whole different level and I actually felt bad for him because he clearly wanted a kid just as much as I did and that was the reason he was still in denial over the fact that he just wouldn't be able to have them. I was honest with him and told him that the divorce wouldn't be pretty and that we definitely wouldn't be in touch after this but I also advised him to get help because what he did to me was seriously messed up. 
He didn't say anything to that and so I left without another word. So that was what happened and I kind of feel relieved, in a really strange way. I'm happy that I got to meet him one last time and give him an earful, that felt really satisfying and I hope I can move on now.